Uh, but before that, we have a very important guest joining us, uh, the management of Lupin. Uh, just to give you a, a background, Lupin stock has risen 50% since the March lows, now trading at 25 times for FI22 uh, price to earnings. And this is, of course, a little more than its five-year historical uh, valuations of uh, 22, 23 times. But then the last five years have not been the best of times for uh, pharma stocks. So what's the uh, status in 2021, the status of resolution, compliance issues for all these questions? Ramesh Swaminathan, Executive Director and Global CFO, Lupin joins us. Good morning, Ramesh. Thank you very much. Uh, well, I'm not going to start with compliances. I'm going to start with your spate of new launches and the approvals you've got in December in the US markets. Uh, a lot of unpronounceable words, uh, mycophenolate, Mofetil tablets, organ transplants, uh, medicines. Okay, just tell us, you know, how much are the market size for all this and therefore any estimation of what this will do to revenues. Thank you, Lata, for uh, having us on. Um, to start with, yes, um, you know, after a drought of several years, uh, you know, we've had some decent launches in the recent past. Um, we've had 12 launches till date. And uh, the most important, of course, is Albuterol. Um, Albuterol has a pretty large market and uh, the inhalation space is particularly uh, very important because it's still a growing market in America. Uh, if you look at, in fact, the other oral solid dosages and other and other parts, the, the generic industry in, in general, has, you know, the growth has been pretty lackluster. But there has, there has of course, been, uh, you know, uh, uh, exceptions. If you look at, uh, I was listening to Gautam speak about the fact uh, that he expects secular growth for, uh, you know, for the pharma sector. Uh, in some ways, perhaps it is true, but in lots of ways, it is not necessarily, it really is dependent on uh, the kind of launches that we have for various markets. Uh, for, for, you know, for starters, you know, most markets are still to recover in full. If you look at India itself, uh, acute is down, chronic is up, and in, in, in particular, in, in the case of Lupin, uh, our growth has been kind of uh, been a little lackluster in so far as uh, overall growth in India itself is concerned, but chronic, of course, has done fairly well. But overall growth is still in the 2-5% range. Uh, if you look at America, prescriptions are down both in acute as well as in, uh, you know, in chronic. Uh, much more in, in, in uh, acute, you know, we service in fact chronic. Uh, and in fact, um, our own performance in America, which we are meddling around $180 million uh, on, a, on, a, on a quarterly basis. Uh, we just about touched that figure, you know, last, uh, last quarter. Um, and of course, the Alberta launch will do us a lot of a world of good. And we expect that, uh, that momentum to continue in Q3 and certainly step up in Q4 also. But having said that, we expect, in fact, um, FY22 to be much, much better than FY21 and, of course, a recent past. Ramesh, good morning. And, I, you know, I think the market uh, uh, had given you that benefit of doubt because it prepared the market that you know, the last couple of years would be tough. And uh, FY21 onwards is when you start to see growth. Uh, on the U.S. market in particular, what's the pipeline? Do you have any, like, two or three blockbuster products lined up uh, potentially over the next two to three years? You know, um, our pipeline has always been pretty strong. You know, so we have close to about 150 odd products that we should be launching over the next three to five years. Uh, some of these, of course, um, were delayed because of the fact that we had issues with our, with our plants itself. Uh, we'll be launching a bulk of that. But more importantly, I think, uh, I think the Lupin story is all about uh, the future products in at least three specific areas. Uh, the inhalations portfolio that we have, the complex injectables and biosimilars. Uh, on the, um, you know, speaking about uh, inhalations, we are, we are working on at least about uh, 15 to 20 products. And there are fairly good ones to be launched. We have, uh, you know, we've already launched Albuterol. Foster will actually follow in, in Europe in the course of, uh, you know, the first, uh, you know, in, in Q4, at the end of Q4, and certainly step up in Q in um, the next year, next fiscal. Uh, we, have Spiri, uh, we have a host of other products that we will be launching over the next three to five years. Uh, and if we speak about the other products, you know, so essentially complex injectables is something that we've been working on for quite some time. Uh, we have Risperdal Const, uh, we have Valperidone, and a host of others also. You know, um, you know, our R&D spends have been around the nine, nine and a half percent range over the last several years. Uh, and there have been a lot of questions about, uh, you know, the productivity of the utility of all of these spends. But for sure, we do expect that to pay off. Um, in the same way, we also have been working on biosimilars. Um, you know, if you look at the number of platforms that Lupin has, it is perhaps the highest in the industry. You know, we're working across very complex funds, including the inhalation space, as well as the biosimilar space, as well as complex injectables. And obviously all of this, um, you know, we expect uh, you know, all of these would pay res you know, good results, uh, which has not been the, the case in the past, actually. If you look at, um, you know, over the last five years, of course, the industry itself has been, uh, you know, 
going through some sluggish times because of price erosion and a host of other reasons. Uh, but also in our case, it is because of the fact that we had uh, very few good products to launch. Uh, the last big one is potentially Fotomet and Lumetsa, that is about four or five years ago. Uh, the really big ones are going to come in the next um, few quarters and, of course, the next few years. Okay. So, um, Swaminathan, if you had to give us an outlook for not just the second half of the year, which I think you spoke about being an 8% growth that you're looking at uh, for the second half, would you want to scale that up or change that in any way? And also, over the next one to two years, what would a sustainable growth rate be for uh, Lupin? Uh, good questions to ask. I think the first quarter and the second quarter, you know, the fact of the matter is uh, the, the, the market itself was, was pretty sluggish. Uh, I just said that a few minutes ago. Um, well, of course, there have been individual cases which have done well because of, uh, you know, products in their portfolio, including products for COVID uh, in some of the, in some companies. And that actually has caused their India portfolio to do fairly well. Though, of course, um, you know, this cannot be taken as, you know, you can't take the same brush and paint everything with every, everybody with it. It has to be uh, very specific. Going ahead, uh, we believe India will pick up in Q3 and Q4. It actually has done so. Um, and, um, you know, and going forward, I think uh, the growth will certainly sustain. In so far as America is concerned, you know, we've already touched the 180, you know, median mark, uh, you know, $180 million per quarter. Uh, we will certainly step up on that in Q3 and Q4 would be certainly much better. Uh, this, all of this will certainly have a good impact when it comes to, in fact, the margins itself. Our gross margins have been you know, around the 63, 64% mark, which I think is fairly good. It's come in on the back of, in fact, a host of measures, including initiatives for, uh, you know, for cost reduction, uh, you know, routes to synthesis, alternate vendor development, and the like. There is a lot of work which is happening when it comes to, in fact, uh, reining in the cost, uh, sales promotion costs, and the like. Um, you know, when it comes to, in fact, speciality, we have uh, cut down on manpower uh, and um, taken a host of other measures to actually reduce costs across. You know, and that's actually bone results, and you can see that in um, you know in our results also. We look at in fact uh, manpower spends in Q2. There's actually a good 150 not crores lower we have as uh, Q1. Um, it might go up a little in Q3 and perhaps in Q4, but um, uh, as a percentage of sales, it is certainly going to be much lower than what it was in the past. It was 19.8. Uh, it's going to be much lower than that going forward. You'd be extremely conscious of that. Uh, EBITDA margins, you know, it was abysmal you know, at the start of the year. It's been growing since then, 14.7 in, the, in Q1. Q2 was about 16.7. Going forward, we expect that to stabilize and certainly increase. Q4, you know, we expect it to uh, go over 20, 21%. Okay. Uh, and, Q, and next year onwards, we expect that to certainly go up. You know, um, we have always been middling around the 22, 23%. And uh, I'm very sure that uh, next year you'll see the same kind of results as you saw about three, four years ago. Okay, got that. Uh, Ramesh, now let me come to the couple of compliance uh, questions. Uh, you all saw uh, 13 observations for your Somerset facility in New Jersey. Can you indicate uh, uh, what the what are the nature are? Uh, can it uh, be escalated or can it be resolvable? Um, you know, we are of course disappointed the way things have turned out in Somerset. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, we think we are, you know, things are still under control and uh, we'll be able to solve it, uh, you know. Uh, Somerset, of course, is not, not such a big producer of uh, our goods uh, as would be the more important ones in India. So, of course, it certainly is very important from our overall perspective. Um, well, we are disappointed, but um, it is, um, you know, it's something which we will have to tackle. But uh, in India, we're fairly confident that the plants that have been impacted, you know, the warning letters when it comes to Goa, to Tampu, uh, would certainly get resolved, you know, the OAI status of Tarapur. Uh, would also get resolved. You know, it's a question of time. You know, um, unfortunately, because of COVID, the FT authorities have not been making visits to India, and there, of course, uh, you know, there's, um, you know, I, I don't know whether they actually do any virtual audits in any part of the globe. And to the extent we have been impacted, um, but I'm very confident that once they come into India and, and they start the audits, they would find a lot of our um, you know, the resolutions have taken place. We are in a state of preparedness. And we are, you know, um, you know, uh, just looking forward to to meeting with them. Uh, give us some timeline, can you? After all, Mandideep uh, uh, unit has a warning letter, so it's a little. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's not as uh, easily resolvable. Can you something know, be resolved in the first half? You think? Uh, will we see Goa or uh, all of this would really require, uh, you know, one visit. visit to India? And I agree that the Mandideep also has a warning letter. 
matter, but the fact of the matter is, it is all uh, you know what comes out of uh, you know out of Mandeep is all uh, cephalosporin products, and we have no new filing okay. from Mandeep. Okay. Okay. So the protection doesn't really impact this. Uh, but I wouldn't say that of Goa and uh, and Kutampur too, which are important sites, and and uh, you know you've done what it takes to kind of resolve all of them, and we're just waiting. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, we can leave it at that. Thank you very much, uh, Ramesh, for spending time with us uh, this morning. And let's hope, as Gautam said, that this is a start of uh, a big growth phase for Lupin and for the pharma sector. Thank you very much for joining us. Have a Thank great day. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Pleasure as always. Okay, we are going to play out the financials of the last few years for Lupin. As you know, it's not been the best of times for them, but they're expecting things to improve now. You'll see the revenue bar chart coming up uh, uh, flat as she goes. And then you will have uh, the EBITDA picture and the bottom line. Okay, there you are. Uh, so the last few years have been troubling, but hopefully from what the management is seeing, they are turning the corner. Well, I didn't really personally enjoy as a macroeconomics student mm. that uh, employ, employee bill as a percentage of EBITDA, as a percentage of sales is steadily going down. This is my big worry about PLIs. Uh -huh. 